It's time for me to shell some more Casios. Or is it? It's no secret that Casio is my number one watch brand. Over the years, they've made a plethora of affordable bangers, many of which are featured on this very channel. Heck, I even did a top 20 Casio list because there are so many viable options that won't let you down. Some of my favorites come in the form of the retro digital models, such as the A158, A168, and A700, all of which give a cool vintage aesthetic for only a few pennies. Therefore, I was immediately excited when I stumbled upon one of their latest releases that appeared to offer this nostalgic styling whilst foregoing the typical square shape. The pictures of this A171 showcase the digital piece with an unusual circular bezel and a more restrained display surround. My reaction, in the words of Todd Howard, was, All of this just works. Yeah, I just had to get hold of one. So I got Amazon to send one my way. Thanks to them for covering the cost of it. You'll find it affiliate linked in the video description if you wanna grab one. I've been trying it out for the past week or so, and honestly, it's not quite what I expected. Let's get into it. The watch arrived in the newer style retro box that I've seen cropping up more recently. It's nothing fancy, but leaves a much better initial impression than the ghastly faux carbon packaging that's usually provided with these cheap Casios. Thankfully, the watch itself looks just as good as in the pictures, with what I would describe as a modern interpretation of the retro aesthetic. The reason I say this is because the A171 maintains a similar color scheme, but looks less cluttered and better thought out than some of the previous iterations. Not only is there lower text density, but this is split between fewer fonts too, giving a more coherent and minimalistic appearance. I particularly like the improved symmetry with the Casio logo at the top center, as well as the gray function ring around the perimeter. Together with the reconfigured case shape, it looks fantastic on wrist and definitely stands out amongst its square peers. You still get comparable proportions with a 36.3 millimeter diameter, 9.1 millimeter thickness, and a sub 40 millimeter lug to lug, meaning it's well suited to slim and average wrists, but could still look dwarfed on those with thicker arms. One aspect I like is the way that the bezel intersects with the squared off looks. I'm not sure why, but I just think it looks extremely cool. A bit like one of those OCD satisfaction memes that you see online. Unfortunately, despite costing slightly more than some other models around 30 to 35 pounds, this one is still constructed of glossy resin, as is evident from the clashing tone of the steel bracelet. Whilst very lightweight, this material will accrue scratches very easily. And honestly, I think this is a real missed opportunity. I remember being underwhelmed by the stainless steel A1000 watches, yet I think this A171 could be a killer if that same material was just implemented, even with no other changes. This watch has got the looks and I'd be more than willing to pay extra to get this one in a decent metal. Given the comparable sizing, I expected this A171 to essentially be a reskinned A168, a model that you've probably seen somewhere before. However, turns out my estimations weren't quite accurate. Casio cheapened out on the mechanics here, opting to use the inferior module present in the older A158 and F91 models, which has the awful side light system as opposed to the much brighter and clearer illuminator system present in pieces like the A168. Surely this would only have cost them a few pence more per unit. So I can only deduce that this is a move to cut costs and save a buck. Literally like one buck maybe. Perhaps their excuse is that they'd rather not have the seemingly obligatory illuminator text stamped on the front, as is present on all of their digitals that use this technology. However, I'd argue that they could just stamp that marking on the back, as they did with the Casio Lineage model that I previously reviewed. Then we could have had the best of both worlds. Aside from that, the module provides just the basic alarm and stopwatch functions, which I honestly think is enough for 99% of people. It's just a shame they cut such an obvious corner. The water performance and crystal are also worth analyzing. You see, this watch has only been given an acrylic crystal and a three bar splash proof rating, despite being priced slightly higher than some similar models. Sure, you can't expect the world for the low RRP, but there are cheaper Casios that pack more scratch resistant crystals in or improved pressure solutions. Perhaps some units will outperform the water designation as other Casios are known to. However, it's a little disappointing to not see at least one of these two upgrades make an appearance in this new A171. Unsurprisingly, this is paired with a rudimentary rolled link bracelet, which pulls hairs, but is fully adjustable and adequate for such a low cost watch. 
It turns out then that the new A171 is more like a recased A158 with identical specifications and the same module, just with an angled pusher arrangement. Honestly, outside of the backlight situation, I like the A158 and I think this A171 looks even better despite not offering the same bang for your buck. This refresh looks good on a few different straps too, and it definitely fits my style, so it's probably still worth it to me. But I'll leave you to decide whether this aesthetic refresh is worth the slight price hike to you. If this were 50 quid, I'd be screeching, but for 30, 35, it's just about all right. If you enjoyed, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.